Good morning, everybody. Today we are here to celebrate the life of Mary Friesen. What a wonderful person. I am married to her daughter, and we have a granddaughter named Cheney. And I am grateful for all of you to be here today with us. morning. I invite us all to bow for an opening prayer. Gracious, loving God, in Jesus' name we come before you. Thank you for your loving kindness and your faithfulness in the life's journey of Mary. We thank you that you called her home at the right time. For us, Sometimes it didn't seem, the time didn't seem right, but your time is always right. Mary has fought the good fight. She has finished the race and has kept faith. Now she claims the crown of righteousness, which you had reserved for her. And that is the promise you have given to each one of us who believe in you, gracious God, and who trust in Jesus as our Savior. Now give us freedom to remember a life well lived and express the joy of resurrection hope and share stories about our experiences with Mary. Bless Betty Ann, and Heidi, and the extended family today as we celebrate Mary's life and as we worship you, her Savior and Lord, and our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. You all have a bulletin, and we follow the program as we have in the bulletin. And on the back, you see uh, this Psalm 73, a few verses that were chosen by her and by her family, and I'll read this in our, as our scripture reading this morning. First in German. Dennoch bleibe ich stets an dir. Du hältst mich bei meiner rechten Hand. Du leitest mich nach deinem Rat und nimmst mich am Ende mit Ehren an. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory. This is God's word. Now we listen to a song. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where you'll find me. Somewhere over the rainbow, bluebirds fly. Birds fly over the rainbow, why, oh, the why can't I? If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why, oh, why can't I?
Heute müssen wir Abschied nehmen. Betty Ann und Heidi nehmen Abschied von ihrer Mutter. Mehrere von uns nehmen Abschied von unserer Tante. Und andere Verwandte und Freunde nehmen Abschied von einem lieben Menschen. Sie hat diesen herrlichen Wechsel gemacht aus dem Tränental in die herrliche Ewigkeit. Und deshalb trauen wir nicht so wie die, die keine Hoffnung haben. Wir schauen zurück auf ein Leben von 97 Jahren. Die Verstorbene hat einen siegreichen Glaubenskampf gekämpft. Sie hat ihren Lauf im Glauben abgeschlossen und folgedessen wird ihr beigelegt die Krone des Lebens, die Krone der Gerechtigkeit. Der Christus war ihr Leben und jetzt war das Sterben für sie ein großer Gewinn. Sie sieht jetzt, was sie geglaubt hat. Und nur noch viel schöner, als wir Menschen es uns vorstellen können. Die Bibel sagt uns, wie schön es im Himmel ist, aber nicht, wie wirklich schön. Der liebe Gott will uns alle überraschen, wenn wir dort oben ankommen. Das hat er sich vorbehalten. Tante Mary, so sagten wir immer zu ihr, die haben wir oft besucht, als Onkel Jakob noch lebte, ganz besonders öfters. Und auch als sie schon allein war, als Onkel Jakob schon gestorben war, haben wir sie oft besucht und haben eine gute Gemeinschaft mit ihr gehabt. Tante Mary hat unter dem Schirm des Höchsten gelebt. So wie es im 91. Psalm geschrieben steht. Wer unter dem Schirm des Höchsten sitzt und unter dem Schatten des Allmächtigen bleibt, der spricht zu dem Herrn, meine Zuversicht und meine Burg, mein Gott, auf den ich hoffe. Und dieser Psalm ist von Trost und Zuversicht durchdrungen. Die Überschrift über diesen Psalm lautet Schutz des Allmächtigen Gottes unter allen Gefahren. Wir sind ja alle immer wieder Gefahren ausgesetzt, gegen die wir uns selbst nicht wehren können. Und deshalb suchen wir Hilfe. Und wir, die wir an Gott glauben, suchen unsere Hilfe bei ihm, bei dem, der Himmel und Erde gemacht hat. Und dann haben wir die stärkste Macht auf unserer Seite. Der uns durch unser ganzes Leben begleitet mit seiner Liebe durch Jesus uns offenbart. Jesus war Heiland und Erlöser für die Verstorbenen. In Johannes 14 lesen wir die bekannten Worte im ersten zwei Verse. Und er sprach zu seinen Jüngern und heute sagt Jesus das zu uns allen. Euer Herz erschrecke nicht. Ihr glaubet an Gott und glaubet an mich. In meines Vaters Hause sind viele Wohnungen. Und wenn es nicht so wäre, so wollte ich zu euch sagen, ich gehe hin, euch die Städte zu bereiten. Und wenn ich hingehe, euch die Städte zu bereiten, so will ich wiederkommen und euch zu mir nehmen, auf dass ihr seid, wo ich bin. Diese Worte unseres Heilandes fordern uns alle auf, ihm treu zu folgen, dass wir alle einmal 
in diese herrlichen Wohnungen einziehen können. Ich habe noch einen Gruß aus Deutschland. I have an email from Germany. Aunt Mary spent some time with her cousin Hans und Heinrich Wiens in Germany when she went there for a visit. The daughter of Hans Wiens and her husband, Jelena and Heinrich Peters from Bad Dreiburg, und die Daughter und Heinrich Wiens mit ihrem Husband Lina und Peter Martens von Rotenburg are sending heartfelt condolences to Betty Ann, Heidi and Family and uh, Dennis and Family. Several years ago, our mother wrote her life story. I'd like to read it to you in her own words. I was born on May 25th, 1925 in Samara, Russia. My parents were Peter Wiens and Ava Wiens Nee Ediger. In 1929, my parents fled to Moscow and from there to Germany and then to Paraguay. In Germany, my younger brother and I were very sick. My brother, who was always healthy, died, while I, who was always sickly, lived. His death left a lasting impression. In Paraguay, we settled in the village of Lichtfeld, and that's where I spent my childhood and school years. Dr. John Schmidt and his wife Clara opened a nursing school in Philadelphia, which I was able to start attending in 1946. That same year, I was baptized by Pastor Gerhard Giesbrecht and became a member of the Mennonite Brethren Church. I had accepted Jesus as my savior when I was 13 years old. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life, John 3:16. In 1947, with the help of Dr. and Mrs. Schmidt, I received a stipend to further my studies in the United States. I learned English at the Tabor College Academy in Hillsborough, Kansas, and then attended the three-year nursing school at Bethel Deaconess Hospital in Newton, Kansas. In 1952, I returned to Paraguay and worked in the hospital in the colony Friesland and the Baptist Mission Hospital in Asuncion. In 1959, I came to BC, Canada, where my sister and her family lived. In the same year, on October 24th, I married Jacob Friesen at the MB Church in Clearbrook. He had been living in California at the time. We had gotten to know each other during our student years in Kansas. We both grew up in Paraguay and studied in the United States. We maintained our friendship through correspondence. We spent the first five years of our marriage in the United States, first in Pennsylvania and in Alameda, California, where our daughter Betty Ann was born. We then moved to Bellingham, Washington, where Heidi was born. In 1965, we moved to Canada and settled in Abbotsford, BC. In 1973, four-year-old Dennis Charles Clark became our foster son. After all three children were grown and had left home, Jake and I took early retirement and for two years did mission work through the MCC in Cahuatemoc, Mexico. We worked with the old colony Mennonites, mainly working with families with disabled members and with AA groups. Wherever we lived, we found a spiritual home. In California, we belonged to the Winston Mennonite Church. When we lived in Bellingham, the Ebenezer Church in Clearbrook was founded and we joined in 1963. We have experienced many blessings through this church, I thank God, my Savior, for the many friends we've met who've become like family. I also thank him that for 26 years I was able to work as a nurse and take care of the sick. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by the right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will take me into glory. Psalm 73, verse 72, 23 and 24. Okay, 
So we would like to say a few more words about our mom, Mary Friesen, who she was. First and foremost, mom was a nurse. We remember the care she took of the ring and the cap she received upon graduation with her RN degree. This was a huge achievement for her. Moving from a village in Paraguay to a completely new part of the world on her own, learning English, getting her high school diploma, and then studying for her nursing degree. Though this must have been very challenging, she always referred back to her years in Kansas with fondness. We remember her stories of returning to Paraguay after graduating in order to help take care of her ill father and the heartbreak in arriving too late. We recall how readily she offered her skills and knowledge to help others, going to doctor's appointments with her sisters, explaining medication, instructing how to give insulin injections. We remember late nights when she was on call at Tabor home and had to run to work in the middle of the night. And we remember countless discussions with dad about medical procedures and practices and their concern for others. Mom really loved nursing. Mom's relationship to her own family, her sisters and her brothers um, and their families and her own parents was also a big part of her life. Mom was very close to her own mother, my Oma, who came to live with us when she moved to Canada. She stayed in close contact over the phone with her brothers Johan and Jakob and their families she was especially close to her four sisters. My Tante Greta, Tante Anna, Tante Laina, and Tante Aifa, who all eventually moved to Canada. They became very close friends, and I recall many family visits, gatherings, outings together, and evening card games. My mom also truly treasured her role as Tante, especially after the difficult time of losing all of her sisters and their husbands when they all passed away. The close connection she had formed with her nieces and nephews, my cousins, was very dear to her. She was also close to the relatives on my father's side. All family was very important to her and they all became important friends. In her 80s, after our dad had passed away, she received an astonishing phone call from Germany. And through the connection with Jelena Peters, um, I believe is our cousin's daughter, she reconnected with many long lost relatives whom her own family had to leave behind in Russia back in the 1930s when they fled. The trip she took to Germany to meet those relatives and visit others that were there was me very meaningful to her. Mum's connection to the Mennonite community was also very important to her. Her faith was sincere and unwavering. Here in Canada, the Ebenezer Church provided a spiritual home and a community of friends and acquaintances. Before settling in Abbotsford, wherever she was, she and my father lived, throughout the United States, they would always find a Mennonite church to join and become involved with. We grew up with a very clear sense of where we had come from. We had always heard stories of how many mum's family, along with many others, had fled Russia and settled in the Chaco Desert. She spoke of the extreme hardship, the struggles, and the tragedies. But she also spoke of the pride, and she spoke with deep affection for her village and the Mennonite community and the many relatives and acquaintances she had there. Like many Mennonite mums, she was also very resourceful and practical. Our basement was filled with her canned fruit and pickles. Saturdays, we would smell bread and svivak and plots baking. Summers meant berry picking and trips to the Okanagan to get fruit. Mum was also very athletic, surprisingly, and <laughs> enjoyed staying active. She spoke of horseback riding as a child, learning to play tennis in Kansas, and she played a mean game of mini golf. <laughs> Even as she grew older, she kept on doing her morning calisthenic routines, 
and enjoyed um, walks and chair exercises, walks with her physiotherapist so long as she could. Mum was a skilled sewer. She often sewed outfits for us, clothes for our Barbies. She would adjust her own suits. She had an eye for fashion and she liked dressing up for special occasions. Later, she took up crocheting and cross-stitching as well. And Mum loved listening to music. She relished a live performance, whatever it was, whether it was a Paraguayan folk group, the church choir, a classical concert, a show tune her granddaughter had performed and recorded for her oma. <clears throat> Mum was also wife of Jacob Friesen, our father, for half her life. They married later than many, um, both being in their mid-30s. <clears throat> their marriage was a true and equal partnership based on mutual respect and shared values. Every decision was planned and discussed and agreed upon by both together. There was lots of talking in our family. They admired each other and they supported each other. And for 47 years, through good times and hard times, they were a team. When dad passed away almost 17 years ago, mom was truly blessed with the friends and relatives who continued to fully include her in their gatherings. These meant a great deal to my mom, and really to all of us. And we are truly grateful for the kindness and ongoing friendship that was extended to her. She was also, Mary was also our mom. She was a rock of the family. Mom was always there for us. When we were young, very young, I remember after school snacks and we would share school news. We had to share school news. <laughs> and when we were a bit older, and mom went back to work, it was made very clear she was only a phone call away. Heidi, Dennis, and I knew what was expected and what was allowed. Chores and homework needed to be completed. Dinner was at six. Bedtime meant bedtime. Cartoons were for Saturday morning. Medakschlop was not to be messed with. <laughs> and there would be cake on the breakfast table on Sunday. As we grew up, she continued to pass on the latest news from all our relatives, and she was always curious and interested in what we were up to. The last few years were very difficult for mom. About eight or nine years ago, she started to experience memory problems and confusion. The dementia was starting to set in, and the time came when she had to leave Garden Park Tower uh, for about a year and a half, she lived in an assisted living facility at Menno Place, and when it became clear that she needed more care, we were very fortunate that a spot was found for her at Burnaby Fairhaven. Mum settled into this home very well. She was loved and well taken care of by the staff there. But the last three years were especially difficult for her, as she lost all ability over her body, to um, move her body, to control her body, and all ability to communicate. And so it was a blessing to know that she is now, it is a blessing to know that she is now at peace and in a better place. Through her life and through her writings, Mary Friesen gave us a message for today. For all of us who have come to mourn her passing and to celebrate a life well lived. As you already heard, she chose two verses from Psalm 73 as they were read to you already and as you heard it from the life story, and you have it in the back of your bulletin. 
Psalm 73 is a testimony of a person who believed in God of creation and who remained faithful to God to the very end. The testimony begins like most of the 150 psalms we have in our Bible. Everything is smooth sailing for God's people. But then we experience in life trouble and pain and illness and injustice and sometimes unfair treatment. And we begin to ask ourselves, why does one person has to suffer so much more than the other person? So many who do not care about God and who do not care about people seem to enjoy a good life, everyday sunshine. Why did Mary, our beloved church member, your mother and your Oma, had to care for your father for so many years as he suffered because of cancer? And why did she have to lose him so early in her life? And then why did she have to experience this illness that took everything from her? Why did she have to experience this enslaving illness that locked her up in her body and took her mobility and memory and communication gradually away? The psalmist describes his wrestling with many situations and life circumstances that seem unjust, and sometimes they are. It does not make sense. He describes his frustration that pushes him to the edge of despair. It is very difficult for him as a follower of Yahweh, the God Almighty, the God of justice, the righteous God, to observe the seemingly happy life of careless, selfish and evil people. The more he compares his life with those people, he becomes miserable. Then there is a radical shift in his mood. The circumstances do not change. However, this believer in God becomes a joyful and thankful person. What was happening to him? Why was Mary, in spite of all the challenges, a thankful and a joyful person? This is how the psalmist describes it and explains it in verse 16 and 17. And I quote from the psalm. When I try to understand all this, it was oppressive to me. Till I entered the sanctuary of God. The sanctuary of God. Most of you might know, and you just heard it from the life story. And I was reminded of this again in our conversation in preparation for this funeral. Church was very important to Mary. I believe she had come to the same realization as the psalmist did, which is, in the presence of God, I gain insights that help me to understand myself and the world I live in. Nowhere else do I find completely reliable information and completely helpful instructions. And then, in the presence of God, I am transformed and I experience joy. The psalmist describes his state of mind, his emotions and his behavior in verses 21 and 22 before he experiences this transformation in the presence of God in the sanctuary. 
and I quote, When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant, was a brute beast before you. End of quote. What an honest description of himself in his worst moment in life. Yet that is possible in the presence of our loving, gracious God. He invites us to come into his presence just as we are and then unload everything. Jesus said it this way. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And so a wise person will do what the psalmist did and what Mary did, to go into the presence of the living God and then remain there. In the words of the psalmist, yet I am always with you. And how it's written in German, dennoch bleibe ich stets an dir. People from all walks of life who trust God's invitation and come into the presence of Jesus experience his care now in this life and forever. In the words of the psalmist, you hold me by my right hand, meaning God gives us honor and respect and sustains us. You guide me with your counsel, meaning God coaches us with divine wisdom so that we are able to avoid the pitfalls of life. And afterward, you will take me into glory, which means in God's timing, in his timing, God ushers his children into his, his eternal presence. There will be no more death or <coughs> illness or crying or injustice or pain. We will be transformed and receive glorified bodies like Jesus had after his resurrection. And this has happened to our dear sister, your mother. Now back to us who are here and who are listening to us through the internet. Azef concludes his testimony in this lengthy 73 psalm by saying, by writing, and I quote, But as for me, being near you is my happiness. Friends, the message Mary has left us through her life and her writing is this, I believe. I think this is how we could say it. I have tested the invitation God gave me. In my own life, I have experienced what Asaf wrote in Psalm 73. So, if you want to have a good life like I had and a glorious future, then... Draw near to the God of the Bible and remain in his presence. Amen. Don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Keep smiling through, just like you always do, till the blue skies chase those dark clouds far away. And will you please say hello to the folks that I know? Tell them I won't be long. They'll be happy to know that as I saw you go, you were singing this song. We'll meet.
meet again. Don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again to some sunny day. We are coming to the end of the funeral service here in this place, and I thank you for coming. The family invites everyone to come now to the McClure Cemetery, the Mennonite Cemetery, where we have a graveside service. After the benediction, the funeral director will come up and give us, give us the instructions. And now I invite us all to receive this benediction. Gracious God, you are the strength of all those who trust you. Wherever you lead, we want to follow you because your ways are perfectly wise and loving. Teach us to accept the joys and sorrows of life without complaining. For you can transform every situation for our good and for your glory. Lord, keep us in your love. Comfort us with your light and guide us by your Holy Spirit. And now, family, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you comfort, joy, and peace. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a couple of moments, we're going to transition from here with uh, Mary Friesen to the hearse. And if you would be so kind as to follow us out behind, uh, we are going to McClure Road Mennonite Cemetery. Uh, for those of you that are going to the cemetery, uh, we are going to go in procession and we're going to come out of the parking lot, turn right, right on Pierdenville Road, the next street light, and we're going to follow Gladwin Road all the way down to George Ferguson Way. And right on George Ferguson Way downtown. And we're going to turn left onto Gladys, which will take us onto the Mission Highway. And at the bottom of that hill, um, that's where the entrance to the cemetery is. It's right beside the new bus station. Um, if you could please have your headlights on and your four-way flashers on. But please cancel your four-way flashers before you complete your turn, before you start your turn and put your proper flasher or your turn signal on. And then once your turn is completed, just put your four-way flashers back on. The other thing is that um, funeral processions are not exempt from traffic laws, so you must obey all the, all the proper signals. Um, we're going to go under the speed limit and uh, we'll try and keep our procession tight, close together. That way I can sort of keep an eye on you. If I see that the procession gets stopped at a light, I will slow right down, or depending where I am, I may stop until that light clears. Thank you. Could I ask you to please stand? Just hold on one. 